Next on episode 18 of the Bill Gephardt Show. I'm walking into a man's world. There's gonna be some things that I can't be oversensitive about, but at the same time, I wanna at least know you respect me. Women wildland firefighters, they're battling more than just smoke and flames. There is harassment, assault, intimidation, hostile work environment. Those are very real things. The obstacles they face and their struggles to persevere. The focus of a powerful new production, Anchor Point, written and directed by Salt Lake-based documentarians, Holly Tuckett and Jennifer Dobner. Our podcast today brought to you by these fine sponsors of local journalism, Robert J. DeBry and Associates. When you're injured, your attorney matters. All Utah Plumbing, Heating and Air, where John Holland and his team stand behind their white glove service with some of the best guarantees in the business. And by ES Solar, save with solar power today, the clean, safe energy of the future. Plus special guest sponsor, Legacy RV Center. All right, I'd like to welcome to the podcast now uh, two people, one whose name you probably know if you read a newspaper anywhere in Utah, and the other you might know if you watch a lot of documentaries. Jennifer Dobner is the writer of Anchor Point. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, thanks for and, having me. And Holly Tuckett is the producer director of Anchor Point. It's a documentary about women in wildfire fighter fighting and some of the problems, the sexual harassment, the misogyny, and the bullying. Let's check out that trailer, and we'll chat about it on the other side. I'm walking into a man's world. There's going to be some things that I can't be oversensitive about. But at the same time, I want to at least know you respect me. There is harassment, assault, intimidation, hostile work environment. Those are very real things. The minute you stand up there and say sexual harassment, the men that aren't inflicting it or don't see it happening just tune out. And they're like, well, that's not happening. That doesn't apply to me. Firing or loss training. If you don't really feel it in your heart and soul to work in a very, very challenging environment, this is going to be a really, really hard career for you, a hard job. <laughs> But I do hope that, that you find friendships here, that you find a community here. Because for me, the more that I can form a network outside of my work is really truly um, what gives me strength. There are so many things I love about doing this work. I love the way fire smells. I love going home and being able to smell the smoke in my braids still. I love that it's never the same. I don't walk into the same environment every day. No two fires are alike. Hey, how are things looking? How do you feel? Uh, I think things are looking really, really good and feeling very, very good. <laughs> okay, no. When I first started in fire, I didn't feel like it was my place to rock the boat. Now I'm past the point of, like, giving any shits. My name is Kelly Martin and I am the Chief of Fire and Aviation Management at Yosemite National Park. I've been in my current position for over 10 years. I am here before you today to tell you my story, but more importantly to provide testimony regarding the dark clouds of misconduct that remains elusive from public view. It's almost as it's accepted that men can be given the benefit of the doubt and women are doubted. You still feel safe here? Okay, just making sure man, I'm, in, I'm responsible for you. I've never seen anybody suppress a fire with their penis. It shouldn't hinder me professionally that I don't have one. First of all, welcome. Thank you for having us. I think many of us know because, you know, we watch television that uh, women are wildfire firefighters but I don't think we think of women as wildfire fighter fighters. Would you agree with that? I would 100% agree with that. Um, if, if I were having a conversation with somebody on the street, most people would be like, women do that. They see women in the profession, but when these women are on hand crews and things like that, they're one in 20. Most crews are 20 people deep and there's usually one, maybe two women on each of those 20 person crews. And that's, that's not every crew. I think we see more women in structural fire fighting than we do in wildland firefighting. Oh, okay. Cause I do, I know 
uh, two women in Salt Lake who have been captains on, on the Salt Lake Fire Department. Um, yeah. Maybe they, I'm sure there are more coming up in the ranks, but maybe not so much uh, in wildfires, although every wildfire I've seen, I've seen not many, but a couple of women, I suppose. Why is that? Um, traditionally, it's been a very male dominated field. Um, you know, the, the, the work is considered more robust. I mean, I mean, it's definitely manual labor. You're digging fire lines, uh, you're hiking for many miles. The skill set is such that women aren't really seen as being capable of carrying a 45 pound plus backpack and hand tools and digging. Endurance. Endurance of yeah. it all. Yeah. You talk about uh, uh, discrimination and bias and that sort mm -hmm. of thing. Uh, sometimes I think women are discriminatory against themselves. I would agree. Um, you know, that is one of the things that uh, a lot of folks in the fire service that are my age are the, the women who kind of put up and shut up, mm -hmm. I would say. Um, and so when they, when they, you know, would have women come up through the ranks, you know, sometimes they would distance themselves from, from other women because they didn't want to be associated with someone who wasn't as strong as they are, right. who, who didn't have the same, same skill set or that was new and hadn't built up those, those skill sets yeah. that they had. And so, you know, they, they would, they would oftentimes, you know, fend for themselves and kind of say, you have to fend for yourself, okay. um, you know, in the past, I, I think that's changing. And I, and that is what our film really is about is women uh, coming together and lifting one another up and helping each other get, get to the, to the higher ranks uh, in the, in the fire service. Jennifer Dobner, this sort of follows the career of Kelly Martin, U.S. Forest Service at the Yosemite. I'm guessing she worked herself up from the Chief of Fire and Aviation. And Lacey England, who is a Helitrack firefighter. Helitrack merely means that you are dropped into a fire by a helicopter, and it yeah. follows their careers, doesn't it? What have you written about with regard to their careers? We were drawn to Kelly and Lacey for a couple of different reasons. Kelly has had, um, she spent 35 years in wildland fire, working her way up from, you know, the ground crew to a very powerful uh, position as chief of aviation and fire at Yosemite, which is not a job that many women ever get. I think as a first time a woman at Yosemite has had that job, is it not? I, I, yes, that is absolutely true. And so she was at a point in her journey looking towards retirement. Um, when she made a decision in 2016 to testify before Congress and whistleblow on some of the sexual harassment, mistreatment, discrimination that she had seen throughout her career. And um, I think it was a really tough decision for her because um, it wasn't something she'd ever talked about. It had happened to her. She'd been um, the victim of a peeping Tom incident mm -hmm. um, with a coworker when she was at um, the Grand Canyon and she didn't ever say anything. She never reported because she knew everything was at risk and she knew she would face all kinds of backlash. And so like many women, particularly of her generation, they stayed silent. But um, in 2016 stories came out or yeah, 2016, I think the stories came out that this was still going on at Grand Canyon and in other places. And she decided she couldn't be silent anymore. So it was a really significant turning point for her. What is the inspiration, I guess, for uh, producing and directing a documentary about women being assaulted and discriminated against and on and on uh, in the fire service? One of the things that, that the film really touches on that I think a lot of people don't really realize is that women, it, it's, not always, it's not always the assault. And, and it's and it's and it's small, insidious bits of gaslighting that knock women down one little statement, comment, whatever at a time. And I think that those statements and those comments happen to women in every field. For instance, what's something I some subtle thing that I might not even know about? Lacey talks about this in the film. She talks about being called a girl by her boss. And um, bringing it and people saying, well, what's the big deal? And she's like, well, 
but they said it, you know, like nearly 50 times to me in a week. And when I pointed it out, I was given a hard time for being a problem by saying, like, I don't want to be called a girl. And it might seem like a small thing to people, but I think, um, uh, well, she's a grown ass woman. She's like she's not, woman. she's not a little girl. No, she's and, not and, a little girl. And she's doing a job equal to every other man on her crew. And yet she never felt respected. And it, by extension, never really felt safe on the line because she didn't know if somebody would have her back because you, they were maligning yeah. her all the time. And somebody said in the film, one has a penis, one does not. I've never seen anybody suppress a fire with their penis. It shouldn't hinder me professionally that I don't have one. Is there a difference <laughs> other than that? Not really. Okay. No, in terms of skill set, there's absolutely not. Yeah. I mean, and that really is the isn't. job. The requirements of the job are the requirements of the job. You have to train. You have to take the same tests in order to um, be able to, to get the right certification to do the job. It's not different between men and women. No, and yeah. Lord knows enough men would fail the test. I probably would, you know, for certain. Mm -hmm. Maybe not now. Or maybe now. Maybe not when I, when I was much younger. Then this is about, is it not, uh, disrespecting women and uh, equal treatment? Yeah, I think I think women are looking for an equitable place at every at every table um, that women are wanting to be seen and respected in the same light that their male colleagues are are, are seen and respected. Um, okay. You know, I, I think for me, the you know, you asked earlier why why this topic, why this why was this the thing that I chose? Um, I, I'm a camera woman. Uh, I'm a camera person. In my years of doing this job, I often am overlooked because I am a woman. Doesn't matter how many years I have, I'll find that men get hired much more often for things than, than myself. I have a friend who works in sports as a camera person, and she's constantly being maligned by, by men in her field. And she constantly is having to prove herself over and over and over again. And, um, you know, it's, it's, I think that it's, it's in every field where women are constantly having to battle to have their seat at the table. And, and it's, and it's not, it's not always about assault. It's not always about harassment. No. It, it's about the small things. Jennifer, you think men are uh, reluctant to work with women on the fire lines? Be careful about your prejudice because... You know, women being disparaged by men is prejudicial against men because I frankly don't think all of us are equally prejudicial against each other. No, oh, but I, I but I think what one of the things that Lacey talks about yes. in the film is that the men that she has gone to for help to to stand as an ally when someone is bullying on on the fire line or yes. within the team. I see. They, the, they, they won't, they won't, they, they'll, they'll come to her at the bar afterwards when they're away from the crew and say, that was really shitty. What happened to you? Well, then why yeah. the hell didn't you speak up yeah. while we were there in the moment? Mm -hmm. And I and think they, that it, it's that complicity that, that yes, not all men are horrible. And, and Lacey has plenty of guys that are on her crew that she loves and loves to work with. However, when it comes to uh, having an ally that will stand beside you and stand up for you, she did not find that. Okay. And I think one of the really important things um, to think about is that in the, in the situation of being in the middle of a wildfire, when there's 20 of you on the top of a remote mountain someplace and things are getting scary, right, or bad, if there isn't uh, respect across the board and trust across the board, y you d would not feel safe. And she talks about it not feeling safe in situations yeah. when she didn't know because somebody on the crew uh, didn't think she was competent and didn't want to work with her and didn't respect her, that she didn't feel it was safe. And that dynamic can affect every other person on the team. And um, so, and I think Kelly would also say that she's had a, she had a career with a lot of great men who supported her, a lot of terrific people who were always, you know, beside her, but she also never felt all the way through her 35 years that when she reached upper management, that she earned anybody's respect. 
Why is this documentary called Anchor Point? In Wildland Fire, uh, you're trying to create an anchor point uh, in, in working with the fire. So it's a safe place where you can engage with the fire and okay. in, in order to, to control it. And, and so, uh, you know, I feel like what these women are trying to do with the, the training that they've created and coming together and, you know, buoying each other up is that anchor point for them. It's also a reference that I think all of us can relate to some point in time in one's life that sort of like gives them a sense of security or it was a meaningful turning point. It's the place you go back to, to draw your strength. That might be your family. That might be a particular accomplishment, but we all have them. We all have these anchor points that keep us steady and confident. And so I think that's the second, one of the things Kelly talks about is surviving a difficult winter living in a teepee in Wisconsin in 30, degree, 30, 30 below weather. And she talks about surviving that and going back to that over and over in her life as if I can get through that, I can do anything. Okay. Well, I guess wrong because I thought Anchor Point might have something <laughs> to do with Women in Fire Training Exchange, that W Trex, I think it's being held in Virginia, where men, uh, well, it says women is in the title, but 10% of the people in this wildfire training program are men. Yes. Well, and that's by design because they're trying to flip the script, right? If they're 10% on the line and on their crews, they really wanted to, number one, have an opportunity to come together as primarily women and train together and learn from each other and develop leadership skills, but also to bring men in uh, so that they understand what it's like to be in the minority class, not, oh. not in terms of their skill set, but just in terms of numbers. It's a different experience. And I think many of the men that we spoke to, um, some made the film, some didn't, all had a perspective change after being, being yeah. in that training situation. If I watch uh, Anchor Point, Mm -hmm. On both sides of this, what will I come away with? Will I learn something? Will it, will it, will I, will it make a difference in my life? I hope so. I hope that uh, those who don't think that women belong will see that they do. Um, I hope that they will also see that women bring a, a different perspective. Uh, women, women bring that that. Oh, what is the word I want to use? I, I, you know, for lack of a better term, sure. you know, they're they're. I think they're more in tune with mother nature because mother nature is all about mothering. And, um, you know, I think that, that, that innate uh, ability to, to nurture, okay. uh, you know, is something that adds to a crew, you know, it adds their perspectives they look at fire differently sometimes than men do. Um, you know, they see uh, the world around them differently. And, you know, I think that every perspective is important. And, you know, there are times when we need to let a fire burn. And Kelly is a big proponent of that. She changed how Yosemite, you know, works around suppression of fire. They, they are one of the national park systems that actually lets fires burn. And, and, and that makes it not the enemy because we're trained, you know, in the city firefighting, the, uh, that the fire is the enemy. Yes, yes. And, 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 and there is a place for suppression. Um, however, if we want to have a sustainable planet, we need to start to look at fire differently. And uh, a lot of these women, because of the fact that uh, they often get, get um, pushed aside into yeah. roles of ecology rather than focusing on, you know, the, the more active roles of say, you know, um, being, you know, training to be, you know, a repeller or a smoke jumper or whatever, they actually learn about how important fire really is to a landscape. And so a lot of those women that are on those wildland firefighting crews have a really much different understanding than just the teenagers who are hired right out of high school 
to because their brute and brawn can fight those fires. Right. Most of the women that are in the fire service have actually gone through, uh, you know, collegiate training as a fire ecologist, as, as, a, as a land management person. Um, and when we are making them feel uncomfortable in those roles, we are losing those perspectives. We are losing that talent when, when they leave the fire service. And, and so it, it's affecting our land management. And Jennifer? Yes. How about it? What will I come away with no matter who I am after I watch Anchor Point? Um, well, I think you'll come away with a new perspective about what wildland firefighting is about. I think you'll be surprised by the women's stories. I mean, surprised and not surprised, right? This is a universal theme. Whether you are a woman in a boardroom or a woman on the fire line, there are challenges that are gender-based, gender bias-based. And so the story is universal, but we don't hear about this much. I don't, um, No, we don't. I mean, I've covered, I've covered a lot of firefighters, fire, fire, wildfires in my time as a journalist. And I almost rarely saw women in anything other than support roles, such as PIOs or at the, you know, at the camp feeding people. So I think you'll get a new perspective about these women and what they can do and what they are doing. And I think you'll appreciate the struggles that they have. I think you'll learn something about good fire as they call it, the, the process of prescribed burning a forest to take out the understory and make way for new, you know, new wildflowers and new trees and other, you know, nutrient flush on the land. I think, um, and we hope you'll love the characters and these women. They're bright and funny and um, a they are. Yeah. And um, <laughs> Kelly Martin and Lacey Ingler, they are funny. I mean, they they're, are. They're witty. They're, 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 they're witty women. And, you know, they're, they're like two generations on parallel tracks, right? They, Kelly's generation handled, it, handled these challenges in one way. And Lacey's generation, far more outspoken, far less willing to, like, just accept the status quo. She's always been like pushing back against um, uh, unfair treatment. She's trying to change people's minds, trying to make them think about language, yeah. what words you use and why words matter. But um, the, you know, she's really, they're both really concerned about fire culture and how, how that looks going forward. So it's better for every firefighter, not just for women. And also they're really working hard to help women um, see fire as a lifelong career, to okay. have the skills to compete, to have the leadership skills, to have the physical skills, so that they can they can see a path forward. I think a lot of women leave the fire service because they get passed over, they're huh. ignored. Well, women can do about anything men can do. That's just all there is to it. Um, Anchor Point, it's already premiered. Holly, where can I find this to watch this documentary? Right now, you can find it online. What's cheap? Three ninety nine or something. Three ninety nine right now. Great I mean, deal. It, it's it's way <laughs> better. Listen to you. You sound like a used car salesman. Three ninety nine <laughs> right now. If you don't make it, you don't want to wait. You sound great. Congratulations. Well, both let me of just you. say, right. yeah. this is not a used car. This so. is <laughs> this is bright and shiny and new and and we are totally biased, but. I think it's really worth seeing for. People. I know, but did you hear Holly's voice go into yeah, oh, yeah. mode when you at three ninety nine? Three ninety nine. Congratulations, Holly, on this accomplishment. Thank you. It's fabulous. Uh, Jennifer Dobner, longtime writer in uh, in Utah and in San Diego and other places. I, I really appreciate you both coming on here and talking about <laughs> Anchor Point, and, uh, and and we'll see you again soon. Awesome. Thanks for having us, Bill. You bet. That is it for episode 18 of the Bill Gephardt Show. Thank you for joining us today. And for the latest in local breaking news, check out GephardtDaily.com. I'll see you next time.